Hi guys, and a very, very warm welcome onto this video series on referencing tracks using Metric AB. My name is Larry Holcomb, aka Get to Know, and I'm going to be taking you through this video series. Now, this is an amazing plugin. It's a real kind of game changer plugin if you don't have it. It's a great learning tool to help you understand how your track compares to commercial mixes allows you to kind of learn what might be going wrong in your production or your mixing, which is stopping you reaching the levels that you want to reach. It helps keep your ears fresh if you're doing long sessions by recalibrating your ears to how very well mixed music sounds. And also even just without referencing it compared to another track, just actually using it as an analyzer to analyze your own tracks frequency content, phase correlation, and loudness is absolutely invaluable. Okay, so in this first video, we're just going to go through some basics of the plugin. First of all, how we actually utilize it. So first thing we need to do is load it up. I'm going to be showing this in Logic, but you can follow along in your DAW of choice. Now, what we have here is actually some of my own music. Apologies for that. And we're going to be referencing against some of my other tracks because obviously we don't want to have any problems with not having the rights to use music. So I've kind of chosen one of my tracks to make it simple and then obviously referencing it against those as well, which we're going to go through. Okay, so now we've got the plugin loaded up. Let's just quickly drag in one quick reference track. We're going to go through how to bring in multiple references, etc., in a minute, but I just wanted to get something in there so we can talk about some very basics of how the plugin works. Okay, so generally we're going to want to have Metric AB at the bottom of your chain or at the very least below any mastering plugins you might have. So let's say I was using, let's say, Ozone to master this track, and we'd want to have Metric AB below Ozone or whatever the mastering limiter is so we can compare post limiting, so we could compare to a commercial release, which will then be at the same level. So that's the first thing to say. Now, the track that we're working on in our project is the what they call the A stream here. And the reference track is the B stream. And you'll see that handily, there's a blue color for the A stream and an orange color for the B stream. I quite like the color scheme, it looks kind of very slick. So let's actually just play something now. Okay. So you can see that we can flick between the two using this little A B button here. And you can see the color scheme. Now let's actually go to a different selection in terms of what we're going to be analyzing. So you can see here that the blue and the orange is kept consistent throughout the display here. So really, really handy. Okay, so that's the super basic kind of start point to understand is that A is our track that we're working on, B is the reference. It can be multiple references, of course and the color scheme of blue and orange for the A and the B stream, respectively. Okay, so now we've got that covered. Let's just talk about the interface a little bit here. Now, this area here, we have the stream gain faders, so we can actually turn up level in and out. We have obviously our AB control here, so we can flick between our original track and the reference track. Now, next up, we have buttons that allow us to decide what we're going to be analyzing or monitoring. Mono, left, stereo, right, and sides. Really, really useful for that. Now up the top here, we have the ability to change what we're going to be looking at. So playback allows us to flick to the areas that we want to play back. Spectrum is going to be covering the frequency spectrum. Correlation is the phase correlation. Stereo image allows us to monitor the stereo image and the kind of distribution between the left and the right hand channels. Dynamics is going to allow us to monitor the dynamics, the kind of difference between peak and loudness, which we're going to talk about later. And loudness is just a straight up kind of loudness meter with loads of really, really useful loudness readings that can allow us to check that we're competitive or you know, not over squashing our music. And also when we're distributing tracks to streaming platforms to make sure we're hitting the target loudness curves correctly. You can see we have some kind of features that allow us to do that more effectively. Now, the bottom of the window here is where we have our 16 slots that allow us to load in up to 16 different reference tracks. And the display just above it will change depending on what is selected at the top here. You can see there's different features that will appear, but one thing will remain consistent, and that is the filters down in the bottom right-hand corner. And I really recommend 
that you don't ignore the filters when it comes to trying to learn about how your favorite music is created to allow you to get closer or even surpass your heroes, you know, because if you look at, you know, what they're doing in the low end, what they're doing in the mid range, what they're doing in the high frequencies, you know, how harsh is their high frequencies, how smooth is it, you know, what's the kind of relationship between the kick and the bass, how loud is the kick, how loud is the bass, those things are easier to hone in on when we use the filters. So we'll talk about the filters a little bit later on, but that's where the filters are located. Now also, it's important to know that we have a little kind of readout here, which will give us some helpful information as the track plays. So we're on dynamics at the moment, it's telling us we're hitting minus eight, which is loud. That's fine. That's just a helpful little kind of readout that can tell you as you're going along what's going on. Okay, so up here we have some settings that we can change as well, which we'll go through. And finally, for the interface, we have the ability to toggle the plugin to be big or small like that. So if you just want to have a quick flick between different reference tracks, and you don't want to have all the other analysis tools available, then you can do that using the toggle mini mode on and off. And finally, we have the ability to save presets from within here as well, which we will be doing later on in the video series. Okay, so that's going to be video one on Metric AB. So what have we covered? So we now know how to load the plugin up, the fact we should load it below our mastering chain. And also the way that it works in terms of we have our track from our DAW, which is the A stream colored in blue. And then B represents whichever one of our reference tracks we have selected. You can see that corresponding to these two faders here. Then interface wise, we have the level coming in here and we have the ability to change that using a gain fader here. Then we have the ability to change exactly what we want to reference or what we want to analyze, I should say, in the reference tracks from above here. Playback allows us to determine what point of the track we're going to be comparing. Spectrum frequency analyzer, correlation phase, correlation stereo images, the distribution between the left and the right hand side. Dynamics are kind of peak to loudness ratio. Loudness is straight up. Loudness readings, which are really, really useful. We can do that in different ways. Down here, we're going to change depending on what we have selected up here. And then we have our filters down here, which allow us to just monitor, say, the low frequencies or the mids or the highs, really useful. And down here, we have the 16 slots, so we can load up to 16 reference tracks at a time. And in the next video, we are going to go through the best way to load in the reference tracks and also how we can use the playback function. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.